Okay, so the nice thing about this is that even despite its very low price, it is UL listed, also TUV, and has all the requisite certifications, which is nice. One thing that's a little strange about it, it does, I think, use the common HP power supply voltage, 19.5 volts. Again, see the high book review, but the high book did use 12 volts, which is pretty nice. So you, if you needed a replacement power supply, you could just kind of find one that was about 40 watts and you'd be good to go. The power supply on this unit is 45 watts. So let's get the back off of this. There are two strips on here that cover up hidden screws. And what's nice is that they're all Phillips. And so what I'm gonna do is remove the two screws on the front first. What I've found is that for these rubber strips, they are adhesive down. I've taken this apart once already, so they might be easier to come off a second time. But if you're not careful, it's pretty easy to tear these. Hopefully I don't. So the whole thing is just to go as slow as you possibly can. There are plugs that go into the chassis. So as you go, don't speed up. Steady pace. If you feel resistance, slow down. And then you should be in good shape. I think just, this one just has one plug. But am I misremembering? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe there's no plugs at all. Yeah, I think there's no plugs. Oh, it's just around the screws. You want to slow down. That's what I meant. And these little keyed features in the plastic. So that's one piece. It's just got adhesive on the back. We'll just put it over there. And the same thing on the top. There's only one screw down here. So on the top, there are little plugs underneath. And I'll show you once I remove it. So we gotta go very slowly on the top. Because if you go quickly and you pull against that plug, you'll just rip the thing apart. So I would recommend keeping your finger over this just to help keep the tr minimize like, any kind of translation of this strip if you wanna ensure that you don't rip it. And there we go. There's the plugs I'm talking about, see? So if you go really fast, you might tear it at those at those points. But that's it, both of the strips removed, and let's just take out all the screws. There are four total, one on the bottom here, and three on the top, and I'm pretty sure they're all the same. These all go into threaded posts, which is nice, and one of them came all the way out and the other three did not. So I'm gonna flip this over so I can get the other three of them out. Those are the top ones and that's the bottom one. I think they're all the same. They are all the same screws. Oh, I think you actually use a pick. There we go. Yep, that was, easy. So, that was so easy. Just along the upper hinge here, I just put it and inserted the pick up there and gave it a little twist. And I'll do the same thing on this corner. Just get the pick in there. Get on camera. Just give it a little. That's it. And then lift up. I think there might be one in the middle that wants to be released. Yeah, one right there, I think. There. Just want to go along the edges so I don't put a lot of stress on things. And we are now inside. Here is the inside of the back cover and it's all metalized for EMC. Once inside, what a nicely laid out machine. Now, it is a nicely laid out machine that has been massively cost down. Like this has been cost reduced to the max and I love it. I love it because they designed this thing to be super modular. It still retains good parts and you can see where they were like, nope, we need to get this thing down below whatever price. And they just removed stuff. Let's just start from upper left and go around because obviously I want to start with the processor is. So here we got the Intel Celeron. It's actually held down with the typical retention clip, but it's just a, I think it's a mica sheet. You can kind of see it beneath there. I think I could probably remove this. I kind of want to see it. Um, let's disconnect the battery. Taking the battery out which is just two screws. Oh, there's more screws, three screws. And I'm doing this so I, if I accidentally touch the screwdriver to the board that I don't damage stuff. Okay, this is, oh, there's a fourth screw. Four screws hold the battery in. Just lift up and it's got just a little plug on it. And there it goes, it's disconnected. It's gotta remove this tape. And then we got the battery out. How easy is that?
So the battery, let's just talk about the battery for a sec. 41 watt hour, 11.4 volts, and it is y'all recognized. Again, if you're curious why I'm excited about this, take a look at the high book video I did. So here's the y'all recognition. There's also C marking and other compliance markings. I can feel that it is three cells, which makes sense at 11.4 nominal. So there's three cells in series that I can feel. And it looks like the manufacturer is Dynapec Electronics Technology. I got sidetracked. Let's get back up to the upper left and take this off. Something. Oh, little connector here for the left speaker. That's taped on. That's very interesting. They've got a mica sheet that goes to a little metal heat spreader, but it is using thermal paste. The good thing is that it doesn't get very warm. So here's the heat sink, basically. It does have a thermal paste between the processor and the heat sink. It has a mica sheet that it interfaces with, and that mica sheet then is coupled to, I think this is aluminum, which is interesting because the high book used the massive like copper heat sink. It wasn't thick, but it was pretty large for that. Anyways, this is the heat sink. I'm gonna put this away for now. I wonder if it would run without it because <laughs> it's so low power, but I, I think it probably wants that. Now this, I don't, I think this is taped down. No, it doesn't appear like it is. Let me get a plastic scraper, see if I can get underneath that. I can. Can I pull that up so we can have a look? Take a look what's underneath here. Oh, that, is that is taped to the CPU. But I'm going to pull it off. Oh, there's our little tiny Celeron. Look at that. That's it. So there is the Celeron. Four core, four thread. And I'm pausing because I'm not seeing the storage. The EMMC storage. I was curious about that. I'll put this back on now because it serves no purpose really to have it off of here. And it's probably being used to help with heat spreading. And it'll probably be helpful to have this when I put the new thermal compound on there. I might just clean it off and put a thermal pad on it, but even the 1.5 millimeter might be too much. I was just curious to see what was underneath there. I don't think that's super critical because there's nothing underneath there. But I think it is just to keep the mica pad from touching anything else. I don't know what that is. I can't see where the EMMC storage is. I'm wondering if it's on the flip side of the board, but we'll move down away from here and go down to the ram which is so dim it really is so dim so you have one slot where you can tell that they could have easily just populated it with another slot if it was a, a mid-level laptop but this is just single channel and it is upgradable i'm remembering correctly yeah the maximum amount of ram that the gemini lake refresh so the intel celeron processor n series which is a generation 9.5 part the maximum it can handle is 8 gigs so if you got 16 gigs you it wouldn't really help you but i did order 8 gigs for that anyways we come around here to the more into the center and we've got I don't know what that is. IT. I wonder if that's just related to Secure Boot because um, it does support Secure Boot. I'm thinking perhaps it it is. I'll get the part number and put some more information that if I could find it for that. I did forget to mention over here on the left side where the Ethernet port is. You have the Ethernet isolation transformer. We have all of our ports here. They are all soldered and connected directly to this PCB. So if they got damaged, you'd be replacing this whole section here. As we move over to the right, keep going this way, the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module actually is on M.2 adapter. So you could potentially, if you didn't want Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you might be able to remove this and put in an M.2 storage. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this is AC. It's not a Wi-Fi 6. And then there's a, this flat flex that runs from somewhere. I think it's, I can see where it terminates. Don't see where it starts, but it comes out here to this daughter board, which handles just USB-C. It's really weird. It just has the USB-C on it. That's it. Here's where the fan would go. And there's a block of plastic. I mean, it's nice. The block of plastic actually is designed to cover up uh, what would be vent holes on the back of the laptop. So you don't want dust getting in if there's not any air pushing out, but they put this plastic piece in here and it's, and it's just to, occupy the space of where a fan would be if it was a higher power processor. Let's just take a look at that. I don't think it's going to be anything interesting to see beneath it, but this is your no fan fan. <laughs> 
it's just it's, I find it very interesting to see the things that have been cost reduced to get them down to one hundred ninety nine dollar laptop, and that there are other laptops out you know out there that that HP makes that are in this line that have all the stuff populated and are several hundred dollars if not thousands of dollars for this particular design. They may not use plastic, they might be a different material, but they said the same motherboard, same layouts. I like that kind of one modular design they use that's being used across a variety of platforms, which is really nice. In the upper left corner is the display port connection going to the display. That's that connection there. And then power going to the backlight. Here, I don't know what this is going to. I think this might be for the trackpad and for the buttons, but it's not clear because I'm not gonna remove the motherboard completely. Um, that'd be a lot more uh, involvement there. But then we have the trackpad, which has a, I don't know what that little chip is on there, but it's a little, little chip there. And then we've got the buttons that have a connection to the motherboard, but also have a connection back to the trackpad. That's interesting. Oh, it looks like there might be only one connection. So this connects to this, and then this connects back to the motherboard. But at the very top, you've got your two speakers, left and the right speaker made by Fico. Their speakers, they didn't sound bad, but they didn't sound great. I am impressed, even with the way that it is right now, with the four gigabytes of RAM, which some might say that's way too little. It is very usable with four gigabytes of RAM, and I think that's more a testament to Windows 11 than it is to the laptop itself. I do also feel that there is something to say about the N4120, the four core, four thread, Celeron, I think that's a much more usable processor. It definitely saturates to 100% when it's doing updates and other things like that, but it never gets to the point where the machine slows down to where it's not responsive. And that was the one thing that, even when I was using the Highbook and everything was working on it, it would slow down to the point where it was becoming almost non-responsive. So this is a nice upgrade. to have two extra cores and just two extra threads. Overall, I think it's a really great laptop. If you're not interested in HP for whatever reason, or you're not interested in using that Office 365, because I don't think this is really worth $209 without using that, or $199, which is what I paid for it, without using the one year of Office 365. Because you're basically paying for a Windows 11 license and this is pretty low-end hardware. But if, if you're not interested in using Office 365 or just don't want an HP laptop for whatever reason, there's a Lenovo IdeaPad 14-inch Intel Pentium, which you gotta be careful with these naming schemes now that Intel's using, N5030, which is the, basically the same as this. It's it's just, it's a little faster. It'll burst to a little higher frequency. This only goes up to 2.6 gigahertz. The Pentium Silver processor will go up to 3.1 gigahertz, but they're still have, they still have the same scenario power design and the same maximum TDP. So how long it stays there, I don't know. But for very quick bursty loads, it might be a little bit faster than this. this. It also has the Intel UHD Graphics 605, which it might sound like who really cares, but this has only 12 execution units in it, whereas the 605 has 18 execution units. So it's a pretty remarkable increase in graphics performance. For me, it's, it's not of any interest really for what I'm using it for. If I could get it, fine, I'll be happy with it, but I wouldn't go out of my way to go get that. But the one thing a Lenovo has that I think is worth considering for those that are concerned about storage is that it does come with 128 gigs of eMMC storage, which is the one thing that I was a little bit surprised about. I was like, oh, I thought it came with 128 gigs and it only came with 64. It's good enough for what I need it for. And I think it even goes beyond the good, good enough where I can use the display, I can even browse the web on it. It's not painful on modern websites, which the Hyundai struggled with those. I think it was the N4020, which only had two cores and two threads and was clocked to like 2.4 gigahertz or 2.2 gigahertz maximum. It was not have much headroom there. So that's the HP Stream laptop. The actual part number in typical HP format is the model 14 CF2121 WM. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.